The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Welcome to Harvest. On today's program, why are women by the thousands headed to Washington this weekend? Pro-life advocate Jeanette Burdell shares her passion to protect the unborn. And are you the type of person who sees the glass half empty or half full? Well, discover why it matters in today's teaching with Pastor Mark Lance. Also, Brian Bush joins us from one of the most sacred sites in Jerusalem with a Holy Land moment today. The world news begins in just a moment here on The Harvest Show. On this Thursday, January 26, 2017, here's what's happening in your world. British Prime Minister Theresa May is heading to the United States to become the first foreign leader to meet U.S. President Donald Trump. May's staff worked feverishly to secure the two-day trip, which includes a meeting with the president at the White House on Friday. British officials hope it will cement the U.K.'s place as a preeminent American ally and provide proof of what Britons more often than Americans call the transatlantic special relationship. Mexico's president says he rejects Trump's decision to build a border wall and repeated his country would not pay for it. President Enrique Peña Nieto did not address reports. He's considering canceling next week's visit to Washington following Trump's order to begin construction of the wall between the two countries. Peña Nieto did say that after making consultations with various Mexican institutions, he'll make a decision about the next steps to be taken leaving unanswered the question of whether he'll travel to Washington January 31st to meet with Trump. A policy announced Wednesday by President Trump targeting immigrant protecting sanctuary cities was blasted by state and local officials across California who threatened to go to court to block it from having its effect. San Francisco is a sanctuary city. It's in our DNA. We will continue to remain a sanctuary city in the face of hostile federal actions. Democratic officials in cities from Santa Ana to San Francisco vowed to fight efforts by the new president to withdraw federal grants from cities that don't cooperate with immigration enforcement. It's not immediately clear precisely which cities could be affected by the action signed by Trump. An update on a story we brought you yesterday. 15 people now have died, 50 are wounded after extremist fighters attacked a hotel in the Somali capital of Mogadishu. The assault on the Daya Hotel started when a suicide car bomb exploded at its gates. A second explosion followed. Militants then opened fire and tried to enter the hotel. The attackers were all killed, as were two prominent Somali elders. And police in Bangladesh's capital fired tear gas and rubber bullets today to disperse protesters. Demonstrators are demanding the cancellation of plans for a massive coal-fired power plant near ecologically sensitive mangrove forests on the coast. Five people were injured. The government insists that this planned 1.3 gigawatt Rampal power station is key to reaching its target of 24 gigawatts of electrical capacity by 2021. Still to come, Pastor Mark Lance has part two of his teaching, Ambassador of Hope. But up next, pro-life advocate Jeanette Burdell shares her passion to protect the unborn. We're right back with more Harvest after this. Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child, so maybe today, you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18. Or maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60. And for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. 
Tomorrow, the 44th Annual March for Life will be held in Washington, D.C., with satellite marches in many communities around the United States. It all marks the anniversary of the Supreme Court's landmark Roe v. Wade decision, which legalized abortion. Jeanette Burdell is the executive director of Right to Life in St. Joe County here in Indiana. She joins us today on The Harvest Show to talk about the pro-life movement and a movement right now, Jeanette, that seems to have plenty of momentum behind it. There are lots of good things happening for pro-lifers out there. There sure are, Chuck. Um, just since 2011, I was recounting this morning how many abortion clinics have closed around the country. So while Roe v. Wade is still law of the land, we are on the offensive now, I would say, and things are looking up. Why do you think that's happened? Because obviously the, there's a new sheriff in town now with President Donald Trump, but all of these closings happened well before he took office. That's right. I just think it's people. It's the body of Christ getting out there and saying, no more. We cannot allow this scourge on our country anymore. We're taking matters into our own hands. Legislatively, we elect officials that will pass good laws. And then, uh, so it's no longer bar yourself to the door of the abortion clinic. It's let's be wise as serpents and gentle as doves, you know. I mean, let's get some real work done. So. You know, I've heard the pro-choice argument, um, Roe v. Wade will never be overturned, so why the big deal? Why go march? Just accept it as it is. But so is that the ultimate goal, to have it overturned or to just stop um, curtail abortion in, you know, in communities around the country? You know, it's both, really. Okay. I mean, you need both approaches. You just need to have it be less of an option that women want to seek. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of abortion clinics closed, frankly, is lack of demand. And with the wonderful pregnancy resource centers we have around the country doing their wonderful work, um, women do know now more about their other options. And adoption, which, which we strive to make a better um, campaign of, we've got an advertising campaign to better that option because there's a stigma about it. So there is that. There's just the holistic approaching women. But then also, yes, of course we want to overturn mm -hmm. Roe v. Wade. Because as I said, it's a scourge on our country. It's, it's awful that we have allowed 60 million unborn lives to be taken since 1973. Obviously, one of the criticisms the pro-life community has faced throughout those 44 years is, okay, you tell us not to have abortions, but what alternatives do you provide? And, you, and you've talked about adoption, but you also mentioned these crisis pregnancy centers, these pregnancy resource centers that women have. Talk about what happens at those places. Well, women get a free ultrasound, first of all. Um, instead of being lied to that this is a clump of cells, terminate the pregnancy, uh, they see that it is really killing their child. And so even as early as five weeks, six weeks, there is a heartbeat and they hear that. So at most of these centers, those are free services, a free ultrasound, free pregnancy test. There's such a thing even as early pregnancy loss, so she may not even have a viable pregnancy, but why risk being lied to by an abortion clinic who will certainly take her money and, um, and her child when she just has a lot more to learn. And then beyond that, these crisis pregnancy centers give her moral support, physical and material support as well with the vast resources that are in the community that most women don't know about. Is it correct that Planned Parenthood, I mean, performs almost all of the abortions, I mean, around the country or in other parts of the world? Uh, they perform a large percentage. Mm -hmm. They are the largest abortion provider. Mm -hmm. I believe 325,000 lives are lost per year by Planned Parenthood in our country alone, and you're right, they're international. So there are lots of other independent abortion clinics as well, but Planned Parenthood is the biggest. The Planned Parenthood supporters will say, well, they also offer a ton of other resources for women and that they offer health checks. Is that true? You know, Cecile Richards, their CEO, even uh, had to appear before Congress and testify that they do not offer mammograms mm -hmm. when actually the mantra and the rhetoric had been before that they did or they wouldn't correct those who would mislead the public in saying that they did. And uh, so, no, that's one they don't offer. Um, they don't help with pregnancies very often, prenatal care that is, um, adoption less than 1%. So the vast majority of their clientele that come to them pregnant are offered abortions. Coming off the march that happened last weekend that involved women, mm -hmm. does that put 
even more of an importance on the march that happens tomorrow for the pro-life community? Absolutely. I believe so. I hope people around the country will come out stronger than ever in their communities. Um, the March for Life in Washington, D.C., I think will be the largest ever probably because of what we're facing currently. You know, we were talking before the show, and as an African-American woman, I am terribly, I mean, just really concerned at the number of children um, who are being aborted, black babies that are being aborted. Mm -hmm. Kind of share that statistic, because I told you when one of my white colleagues told me that about 15 years ago, I thought she was actually just um, being prejudiced. But it's not untrue. I mean, African-American babies right. are aborted at a disproportionate number. That's right. You know, Valerie, the African-American population is 13% of our overall population in the country, and yet they make up over 30% of the abortions. Um, in Washington, or excuse me, in New York, it's extremely high at 55% mm. of all black babies are killed in abortion. And this is tragic to all of us, regardless of the color of our skin. Those are people that were meant to be. You know, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, says the Lord. And, um, you know, these are people missing from our communities now that were meant to be students, brothers, sisters, workers, you know, lending their unique gifts and talents, and they're no more. It's very sad. Where is the disconnect between uh, reaching the black community and the pro-life community? Then? Mm -hmm. I hate to say I think some of it is politics. Um, we have to overcome that. At our Right to Life chapter, we are apolitical. We, you know, that doesn't matter. Um, your faith doesn't matter which religion you are. We just want everyone to come alongside and to value the sanctity of life. Unfortunately, the issue has been politicized, but I would just like both major parties and, and everyone to just recognize the sanctity of life and say, this is an importance. Um, also, I believe our churches need to speak up more, frankly. Mm -hmm. Our pastors are sometimes um, shy or even afraid to bring up this issue. They know that they have a lot of post-abortive women and men even in their congregations. But what a disservice if we aren't courageous to speak up because, yes, at the risk of offending some, you risk many more making the same grave decision because they think it's not a major issue now in our churches if we're silent. Plus, I think pastors need to be reaching out to those that are post-abortive in their congregations to offer them the help, the forgiveness, and the healing that we, we know is there for post-abortive people. So for a pastor who's on the fence about how to do this, what does your organization offer them in terms of resources to help make it easier for them to, to do that? We have all kinds of resources. We have a pretty big library of great topics on the subject, but I think my best resource is Mike Spencer. He's the regional Midwest director of Life Training Institute and came to our prayer, prayer dinner last year and really addressed the pastors uh, with some of what I was saying, but so much better because he is a former pastor. He's walked in their shoes. And uh, so I could refer them to him and he'd give them a good shot in the arm, some good <laughs> advice. Also, you have what's called a Life Defenders Boot Camp. Um, is that something that's taking place locally and nationally? Tell us about it. Well, for sure regionally, uh, mm -hmm. there are Life Defenders around the Midwest, and I believe they go national as well. But yes, we have one coming up February 11th right here in our community. And you know, we all owe it to ourselves to learn better how to articulate the pro-life uh, issue and with compassion and grace, not just with judgment, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we know as Christians in our heart of hearts that the Lord says, thou shalt not kill, and yet women still are in hard situations, so we want to accompany and walk alongside. So these boot camps help train people in how best to do that. Um, we've got three levels for youth from eighth grade and up, even through college age, but then for the first time ever, we're doing an adult session as well, and adults are craving this, actually. They're hungry for it. Isn't that one of the difficulties, though? You, you mentioned the judgment. And, and for people who are perhaps silently pro-life, they don't want to stand out in a march. They don't mm -hmm. want to stand out on the street. They don't want to necessarily stand outside an abortion clinic, but they support life. What are ways that they can get engaged into the pro-life effort without necessarily doing what they feel is a spectacle? I'd say the first is prayer and seriously intentional prayer. It, 
works miracles. We mm -hmm. know that. So from home, in your churches, um, pray, 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 pray for this to end. Um, but secondly, support your local pro-life organizations financially or with your volunteerism, you know, time, talent, and treasure. Right. So there are quiet behind the scenes ways to do that. And then especially just um, talking about it with your family, your neighbors, your friends, and especially when a woman needs accompaniment. Well, Jeanette, would you look into that camera and speak to that woman who had, a, had an abortion and is still dealing with the shame and the guilt of that issue? I mean, because we, we get calls here at Prayer Line about it. I can't move past the shame. I can't mm -hmm. forgive myself. There is forgiveness, absolutely, through Jesus Christ. He forgives you. No sin is too great for him. And if you think it is, um, that may be a sin of pride. We need to check that and know that Jesus forgives and Jesus heals. And there's help for you. Uh, there are many that care about you and just want to walk alongside you and help you heal. And perhaps you have a purpose now going forward to help others not make the same mistake. Is there any kind of national help number that people can call and reach? I'm sorry, I don't know that right off the top <laughs> of my head, but uh, Project Rachel, I know, is a national organization. Mm -hmm. And simply if you Google uh, Post Abortive Help, there will be a lot of resources and hopefully even right in your own local area. Well, Jeanette, we really appreciate you taking the time to share with us today. Good luck tomorrow. Thank with the you. march, not only in D.C., but here in South Bend. To connect with Jeanette, you can go to ProLifeMichiana.org, or if you need some help, you can always go to our resources at Harvest-TV.com. There's much more Harvest to come. Stay with us. Today is your day. This is your moment. Life is calling. It's time to get back that extra spark that you've been missing, and it's simple with Mineral Concentrate, an all-natural trace mineral product designed to promote energy and focus without sugar nor caffeine. Call 1-800-965-2345 or log on to mhclife.com. Today is your day. It's time for life. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. Hello, everybody. Hey, it's Brian. I'm standing outside of Jerusalem's Jaffa Gate, the old city behind me. And I thought I'd do something a little different today for our Holy Land moment. You know, when people think about technology, they often think about Tel Aviv here in Israel because it is the entrepreneurial startup hub, not just for Israel, but for all of the Middle East. But Jerusalem's trying to play catch up. The mayor and the municipality have made a decision that they're going to take the old city to free wireless. And indeed, uh, they're working on it. They've been working on it for the past couple months. And it's really exciting because they've used this area of Jaffa Gate as their test, as well as an area near to the Holy Sepulchre. It's worked out well over the last couple of months. And they're uh, going to expand it now to all four quarters. And it's good news because often when I'm walking through the old city of Jerusalem, people ask me, hey, how do I get there? And they got their phones and they're trying to figure things out, you know, and the free wireless is obviously going to help them 
uh, get to the places that they came here to visit. And I'm excited about that. It's going to cost about 2 million shekels. That's roughly $600,000. Uh, $650,000 worth of investment. But you know, for the millions of people who come here every year, it's going to pay off. It's going to be great. There it is, Jerusalem O. Something that you can look forward to when you visit me here in the old city. Friends, thanks for watching The Harvest Show. And uh, it'll continue right after this. Bye-bye now. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. On Tuesday, we started a conversation together entitled Ambassadors of hope. And I'm giving some principles out of the experience of the Israelite spies in Numbers chapter 13. And the first thing I told you is that ambassadors of hope, they see things that others don't see. The second thing is this, ambassadors of hope say things that others don't say. You see, while the other 10 spies could only talk about the giants that were in the land, look how Caleb spoke in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30. The Bible said Caleb stilled the people before Moses and he said, let's go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. You see, friend, that is the voice of hope in the middle of a group of people who only could complain and gripe about their inability to possess the land. You see, you've got to be aware of the force that your words bring to the people who are around you. The words that you say, they create movement in the environment in which you live. Your environment is created by the words that you speak because of the creative power that words possess. I mean, consider this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. The Bible said, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. You see, God spoke and the invisible became visible. The impossible became possible. That which had never existed suddenly came into existence. How? By the power of his word. You see, when you look deeply into the word of God, you're going to find that all he's done throughout the history of the world is speak. Everything he does is accomplished through the power of his word. The Israelites who spoke words of doubt and fear, they never lived in the promised land. Because these leaders spoke more about why they couldn't possess the land rather than why they could possess an entire generation. They never lived where God wanted them to live. And Joshua, Caleb, they were the only two adult Israelites of that first generation who were able to experience the fullness of God's blessing. Look in Numbers 32 and verse 11. The Bible said, none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, because they've not wholly followed me. But look at this, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Why? Because they wholly followed the Lord. They possessed the promise of God because they were willing to see what others didn't see. They were willing to say what others didn't say. My question is, what about you? Are you going to join the chorus of people who only talk about the difficulties of life rather than the grace of God? Friend, you are an ambassador of hope today. You're the one who's going to stand strong when others are falling into despair and discouragement. You're the one that is going to possess the best that God has to offer. Friend, the world needs you to be that ambassador. I want us to rise together in hope today in Jesus' name. Encouraging word from Pastor Mark, and we'd love to let you know again at any time of the day or night that you want to connect with us here at La Cie. Prayer line is always open, 1-800-365-3732. Great staff and volunteers manning those phones and manning their email. Prayer at is the email address to connect with 
Caroline, and we've got a few prayer requests today. Yeah, and there are some tough ones here. Louise from Illinois, my husband passed away recently and it's hard. I need the strength of God to get me through this. Please pray for me. Then Mabel from Florida says, my 62 year old brother passed Thursday night. This has not even been, a, this has been a terrible week for our family. Please, uh, please pray for us. And then Carrie from New York says, my best friend committed suicide wow. and I still can't believe it. I don't understand. Get, mm. understand. God, please help me with this. You can hear yeah. just through these words, the desperation of these people. They need God um, to just to intervene in the situations that they're going through. So Chuck, would you please pray? Well, the good news is God is there. God has not forsaken you. It may seem like he is not uh, in the situation, but he is, and he has a great plan, and, and it's being executed right now. And yes, you hurt and you suffer, uh, just as God and Jesus did, but came through that and so will you. So Heavenly Father, just comfort your people who are mourning today. Bless them and help them see your presence in the situation. Help them see your plan unfold before them. Lord, give us all the deep faith that we need to trust in you, to feel the hope and the love that you have for us. And Lord, help us to put you first in everything that we do and know that you are in control of the situation no matter what it is. It's in your name that we pray, amen. We amen. thank you for your time today and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow on another edition of Harvest. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Since 2000, Live from Studio B has become an intimate venue for over 250 of today's most recognizable and up-and-coming Christian artists. Oh God, and you have made me new. And Visit livefromstudiob.com for performance schedules along with archive shows ready to be streamed. Live from Studio B, up close and personal with your favorite Christian artists. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.